I'm Delta Work, and it's time for a new episode of Very Delta. Today we're playing Truth or Darian, because Darian Lake is here. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off! M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who always has time for a toe ring. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. I think it's time we talk about receipts. And I'm not talking about the kind of receipts that you say uh, that you're going to pull out to like prove your friend wrong or show them something that happened or some secretive tryst that someone had or some proof of you being right and them being wrong. I'm not talking about that like sort of like uh, fantastical idea of a receipt. I'm talking about an actual printed receipt of a transaction. You know, like the kind that pops out at CVS and just keeps rolling out over and over and over. Or the kind that you get that on the back says like, call in for a survey and win a free jumbo jack. Or maybe you get a receipt that uh, says on there, uh, turn this in and you can get $5 off your admission somewhere. Those receipts used to always come at the end of every transaction, not just uh, as a, a, a proof of the transaction, but sometimes as a reason for you to return. Because again, a coupon, uh, some, some sort of survey. Not too long ago, it was like a policy wherever you went. There would even be like a printed out sign at a drive through that would say, if you don't get your receipt, call this number or ask for the manager because we want to give you X, Y, and Z. And obviously the reason for those receipts is because not only do they want to um, uh, prove that a transaction took place. And so you have that so that you can say, this is what I ordered. This is what I got kind of thing. Uh, the idea behind that is also, it is a way to retain the customer because you're going to flip it over and it's going to say, again, uh, free car wash. Uh, a, a lot at a lot of grocery stores, they'll have like advertisements on the back of them, a car wash or a, a dry cleaning service or something. Businesses in the area that you might want to support. So the money stays in that community. But at a chain place like a restaurant, it used to be a thing where the, the employee sort of got reprimanded if they did not give the receipt. I feel like somewhere just before the pandemic or during the pandemic, during that uh, 2020, 2021 time, possibly, um, maybe because of not wanting to interact with people and touch, things became a lot more touchless or whatever. But as we've returned to cash basis uh, uh, transactions as an option, receipts are like no longer a thing. Like receipts are no longer a thing. You have to sort of ask for it and become sort of almost troublesome when, uh, when you do ask for it or when it's being offered. So for instance, if I drive through somewhere and I hand my card and they take the card, uh, obviously that's no longer a touchless interaction. Right. They've already taken the card. So they had to touch me. So what they will say is, here's your card and close the window. But sometimes they'll say, you don't want your receipt, did you? And there's nothing I hate more than uh, an interaction when somebody already assumes that I didn't want to do something or I did want to do something. So they just put it out there as part of the interaction. Like, you didn't want sauce, did you? Not what sauces can I get for you? Is there anything else I can get for you? It's, you didn't need your receipt, did you? 
And of course, I do need my receipt for several reasons. Number one, I always save my receipts because my mother uses this app called Fetch. And if you put in your receipts, whatever transactional records that you are you have available to you, you can win Amazon gift cards. So if you, however many points it takes to get to that point, they'll say, oh, you won a $10 Amazon gift card. Now do it again. Well, you can just keep banking those on Amazon. And you now, anytime you want to make a purchase, whether it's big or small, you can either apply it to that purchase or you can just make what, maybe one small purchase. Maybe you can say, I just wanted to buy... Uh, I, I don't know, a, a lip pencil that's $7 or something. Well, that becomes free. Um, utilizing this is also the reason that they have this app. The reason they have this app, obviously, is uh, data research. They want to know who's buying what, where they're buying it, how often they're buying it there. And, you know, they're not necessarily tracking you as a person. They're tracking the demographic of that area. It looks like people in this area buy boots a lot, or it looks like the people in this area seem to be spending a lot of money at an organic store versus a uh, a 99 cent store, for instance. So that that's kind of what happens with that. That's why these receipts are so important to me. So whenever I am driving through somewhere or I'm at a store, I want them. I want them for a million reasons. I also work as an independent contractor. As an independent contractor, I have to do my taxes. And when I do my taxes, I have things that I write off and things that I don't write off. When I purchase um, props, when I purchase uh, uh, wardrobe, costumes, cosmetics, all of those things go to my job. Um, and all of those things can be written off in, in a category for that job. Whenever I travel, I need a documentation and a record of where I was, how long I was there, what I, what I paid for, what parking I paid for. For some people, it's not that big of a deal to go, oh, you know, this is five dollars. It's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal if you say do that 10 times in a month. If you park somewhere for five dollars, 10 times in a month. I bet you if I told you just to give me 50 dollars out of nowhere, that would be a problem for you because you would be like, well, wh why do I need to give you 50 dollars? Well, if I'm paying individually for that, for me, that's a way for me to sort of line up my expenses, make sense of why I'm spending the money the way that I'm spending my money and how to write it off for taxes. So people, the government knows this is why I make the money I make and this is where that money goes. Um, these receipts, it just seems so strange too that it used this, the, 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 the switch is so severe. It used to be, you know, we're going to reward you if we didn't give you a receipt. Now it's like shifted completely to not only are we not going to offer the receipt, we're going to give you an attitude problem if you ask for one. But what's the big deal? Like what? It's going to print out anyway. It's not going to make the transaction any faster for you to print out the receipt and hand it to somebody. I don't know if they're this is like saving like paper or something. I don't know if it's like. Maybe I'm not seeing the bigger picture and it's like, well, we, you know, we want our employees to do this, that or the other. Well, the hamburger is cooking. <laughs> the hamburger is cooking. So, you know, if it's going to take, I'm, you know, 1.4 seconds for that to print out of the receipt to print out, wouldn't you be better off just giving the receipt than going through this whole conversation about, do you need a receipt? Oh, you don't need a receipt. Oh, let me go print it for you. Ugh. It's like, gruff like gruff like uh groaning oh, i can't believe i have to give you a receipt this is just so difficult you're being so difficult to ask for a receipt is it that hard just how about you just give the receipt because you want a transaction record or is there something like behind this is like the this is the reality that you know more often than not you're going to fuck up the order or fuck up what somebody purchased and you don't want them to have a documentation of what they fucking ordered is that what it is I don't know. It could be, could not be. I mean, you know, first world problems, first world problems, but that's what we do here. Um, I think we should go back. I don't want to be rewarded because you didn't give me a receipt. Like, I don't need to be able to call a number and be like, they didn't give me a receipt. I want some free French fries. I don't want that. I just want you to give me a receipt. Like, just default into, let me give you a record of this transaction that's going to print out anyway. Or at least it used to. Now, now maybe they want to save paper and they can't. So just give people a receipt. I say just give them a receipt. I say just give them a receipt and let them decide if they want to crumple it up, throw it away, or put it away for their taxes, or give it to their mom so they can get Amazon gift cards, or whatever it is. Let's just give people a receipt 
without all the fucking hassle. You know, my fantasy uh, in, in this kind of interaction, I'm, I'm going to place it in the drive through because that's really where, uh, where the transactions matter to me. That's really where I sort of gauge uh, what's going on. That's how I put my finger on the pulse of what's happening in the world is really what's happening in the drive through. Um, you really get to interact with people who are just getting off of work or just getting started on work. You get people who maybe are shift changing in there and, and people who just had somebody shitty work with them. That's where I can really gauge um, myself as how I interact as a customer and how the person in there is going to really take each person as their own transaction. I want my receipt. You see, I want my straw. I want, uh, I want somebody to repeat to me, oh, did you order this item? So this is how it needs to happen. I need to go up. They need to open their window and they need to, generally, this is how we're going to turn it around. They're going to open the window and they're going to go, 1174. And then I'm going to go, oh, hello. Thank you so much. And I hand them the card and then they slam the door. And then I want them to open the door and realize that I was being nice. And I want them to go, I want them to print out the receipt and the card and hand them both to me together. And I want them to say, thank you so much. Can I get you any sauces for your order? And I'm going to say, oh, thank you. I'm fine. And then they can close that window again because I don't want to see any more gnats get inside. And they'll close that window and they'll come back. And then I want them to say, you have the number four with large curly fries and a large Diet Coke. And I'll say yes. And they'll say, is there anything else I can get for you? And I say, no, thank you. They say, thank you very much. And then that's it. That's it. I feel like the exhausting that amount of effort is the same as slamming the door and breathing hard and uh, and not listening. And Because listen, these people have somebody in their ear. They have somebody at the counter and then they have you and then they have the food. So there's got, I understand there's four conversations going on, but having to go through the effort of sort of shaming someone for needing a receipt or also to that, you know, I've talked about this before, the idea of me wanting to check the order. Uh, sometimes they say the receipts in the bag and they, and, and there is a slip of paper in the bag with a transaction record, but all it is, is the packing slip. It's not really a receipt. It's a piece of paper that says, uh, chicken sandwich, French fries, uh, Diet Coke is sitting in there. The transaction record comes from, a, that's what a receipt is. It's a receipt is a trans is a record of a transaction of money that has changed hands, whether it's di uh, digital money or, 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 or Apple pay or, well, maybe not Apple pay, but it's a record of, of, of a cash transaction. Debit card is a cash transaction, a credit card. It documents that. That's not, a packing slip is different. So just because the kitchen put a slip in there, they're giving that record to the person at the window to say, here's what's supposed to be in that bag. And now you need to give me a record of what prints out that says, not only is this what's in the bag, this is how much you paid and this is how you paid for it. That's what I need. That's what I need every time. When I go to a place like a restaurant, a chain restaurant or a subway or uh, any of those places, a lot of them now have the iPad. So you go to a coffee place, they might have those. Subway has them. But even like a Chili's, uh, a lot of places have those where you just do your own transaction. Um, but it'll often have the thing where it says print receipt, email receipt, no receipt. I need the receipt printed. I absolutely need it printed. What, no, no receipt is not an option to me. I guess I could get it emailed, but I'm not going to go home and print it out. So I really do need that printed. And what that... And this leads me to sort of another area, again, with receipts that's super, super important to me. I need to know why when you go to 7-Eleven, not only is there not an offer of a receipt, there is a pile of receipts this tall next to the register because as soon as they finish the sale, it prints one out on a perforated edge and they're just piled up over and over and over and over. And I just think, like, why can't you just, if you're not going to give it to somebody, wouldn't you want to just rip it off and throw it in the trash then? Because why would you want that mess there? Also, maybe I should be going to 7-Eleven and asking, like, can I, maybe I should be going to 7-Eleven and asking, can I just have all those receipts? Like, my mother would go wild if I gave her all of those receipts. And another time when it's so fucking painful when you want a receipt, especially with gas, because I can write off uh, fuel for certain things, not everything, but every once in a while I can when I have a rental car. Why do the pumps sometimes or consistently say 
See cashier for receipt. Bitch, I don't want to walk in there and have to stand in line behind everybody in there who's making a transaction because you didn't want to put any paper in there. You want to print it out inside. Pay for the paper, please. Pay for the paper for the receipt. I don't want to see cashier. I don't want to ever deal with the cashier unless I'm going in for a soda or, uh, you know, a bag of wavy Funyuns, which you should try the wavy Funyuns. They're very correct. Um, I shouldn't have to go back in. If you have the ability to print right here, why are you, what, what's happening? What's happening in here? What happens in here that doesn't go to here, doesn't go to here, doesn't go to here? I'm confused. Like why this, where, uh, there's a lot of moving parts, but there's not that many moving parts. Start ordering some more printer paper, some more receipt paper. Start ordering it. We need these receipts. Do you want to see me take a break? Because I think you want to see me take a break. Coming up, Dairy and Lake gets very Delta. That's the tea. I am ready to fucking blow. I'm ready not for a glow up, but a blow up. Welcome back. I am so excited. This day has been looming. It had to happen. She made it all the way across the entire country just to be here for this specific exact moment when I needed her most. She is one of the funniest, most sarcastic, sardonic, but with a full heart of love. The one and only Darian Lake is here. Oh, hello. I'm so excited to be here as well. The planets have aligned and the moon is in the perfect yeah. phase. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I've, I've been such a fan of this show. Uh, I so. I love you. I mm -hmm. and I know that you know that. I find you to be truly one of the most What's interesting is like you take everything that you do very seriously, but you don't take yourself seriously. And and that doesn't mean um I think a lot of people think when people are self-effacing or or sarcastic or whatever that they really hate themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. Like yeah, there's parts of us that we don't like or whatever, but you truly are such a confident person. Uh, and have you always been that person? Uh, no, I haven't. No, like there was, I mean, there's so many years that I was just like dogging on myself and just like hating myself because I was like, oh, I hate my body. I hate the way I look. And, and um, I would look at like gorgeous, muscly men and think like, oh, do I want to be like that? Um, is that, am I envious or jealous of that or whatever? Or um, is it just me not liking myself or whatever? Mm -hmm. And then I realized, you know, at, at some point that, um, liking yourself has nothing to do with how you look. It's about liking who you are as a person. Like mm -hmm. I like myself as a person. Like I like that I'm funny and crazy and sarcastic and I can be a little too much at times, but who can't, you know? Yeah. So, no. Yeah. Well, I mean, what did you say about hot, sexy men? Oh yeah. Like that well, you like them. Well, yeah. Cause like when I was a little kid, the whole confusion about being gay, I was like, I don't know if I'm attracted to that right. because I want to be gay or if I'm attracted to that because I want to look like that. Mm -hmm. And even to this day, like I'm still fascinated by people who look nothing like me or act like nothing like me, like straight bro culture. I just think it's so fascinating to me because I'm like, what goes on in their head? And I, like, how can I understand these people? Like I'm a like a, a mall, like people watcher. I like to sort of study people and, and mimic them. And I don't know if that's part of like, because I'm, Hello, cuckoo. You've been doing drag for for a long time, so you might know yeah. what goes on. Not maybe not in their head, but on their head. <laughs> you are, uh, you know, there's certain men like uh, a woman who looks soft, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. looks um, mm -hmm. delicate. Yeah, and, and then there's you've always you know. presented that. Oh, so what? what I mean, what happens in Rochester? What happens in Albany? Uh, I know. Well, yeah, in in the upstate Western New York. Um, oh. Yeah, I learned a long time ago as well that uh, there's guys who do react to it, and they love like a strong, confident, uh, dominant woman and mm -hmm. stuff, and so they like to be put in their place as well. They and do. They sometimes want to be the little spoon, and you know they're too afraid to say it, or you know when they get their ass tickled, they're like, "This feels good." And oh. um, and they're like, oh, well, maybe I want something in there. Is that gay? I don't know if that's gay, but uh -huh. maybe if I just find a lady with a penis, she can tickle the right. hell out of it. And and then they come knocking on my door. And how I'm, how long have you been doing drag? Um, like uh, since I was eighteen years old. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so 
20 years? Yeah, 20. Um, yeah, or yeah, 30 years. Okay. So, or, or 32 years or something. Yeah. yeah. 1990 is when I started doing drag. Wow. Yeah. I tell people all yeah. the time, like, um, when, when, like, cause especially now, like, the, there's a there's a new generation of queens that, um, and well, I guess we've seen a couple of new generations of queens. Oh my god! But there's a yeah. uh, many that like might be surprised if they hear me like singing along to a lyric, and they're like, "How do you know that song? Or why do you know that song?" Or, and <laughs> I tell the them, fourth remake of it. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. that's exactly it. And I always yeah. say to them, like, "I've been many women," and they're like, <laughs> "What does that mean?" And like all the older queens will be like. You know, we are not always the same people mm-hmm. that like, we were younger before, too. Yeah. And we had, uh, you know, what are they called? Um, we felt our oats, as Gia Gunn would say. And that's the thing about Gia is that, like, on um, when I first met her and all that, she was sort of like, oh, this old queen and whatever, this big lady, whatever. I guess there's room for everybody, um, which was, of course, you know, body shaming shade or whatever. But I, I don't give a fuck because I'm happy with who I am. And and um, but then when we finally got to talk and I used to tell her like, Oh girl, I would, I was pulling trade up until last week and like, you know, having fun and partying and all that stuff or whatever. And she's like, Oh, and so then we started to get along right. and you know, and all that stuff. And then she left, but and then she left and then she left. Bye. <laughs> See ya. But yeah, I know it's yeah. true. It's, it's like we, we, uh, when, when you look at things with these eyes, like yeah. I've done that or I did yeah. that or I will do that. Or, yeah. um, you know, you're, it's not just drag that you're seasoned in. There was a time coming up, I feel like, when um, when being a, quote, female impersonator was like, uh, that was the goal. It was like, how, yeah. how realistic are right. you? So realistic that, that, that our, you know, quote, unquote, straight men that desire that. Yeah. Because we have to give this sort of heightened femininity. Yeah. That they're and not that's what, seeing. yeah, I think a lot of like older gay men as well sometimes watch uh, TV shows and like eh, she ain't got no boobs she ain't got no nails she's got a beard on like what uh-huh. happened in the good old days of drag but it's like you know things are evolving and there's more you know out there for yeah. people but then there are some of us who are like you know I, I like to look like this you know mm-hmm. uh, if you like it cool if not okay fuck off do you do you know about Delta Lake I do know about Delta Lake yes of course I have listened to Um, she is um us she is. A, we are Delta Lake. My question is, yeah. if there was a Delta Lake and she was a combination of the two, yeah. what would, what's her drag? What would her drag be and what would she look like? How would she be any different from us? Oh, my God. I know. Or what's that's the, the best thing. Parts? I think about that. Oh, the best parts of us is, you know, always so put together from top to bottom and, and having every last detail and meticulous. And, uh, of course, I'm talking about you. Um, Stop it. Yeah. Uh, no, no, absolutely. Continue. Yeah, of course. And but then also Delta Lake, the, one of the, my favorite parts of you is your vocabulary and your your way to talk and your thinking and your writing. Um, for me, I'm like in small doses of, of like I can put this together and string a couple of words together or something like that. You're so fast. Silly. Though. God damn, you're <sighs> fast. With That's back the at only someone. time I've ever been described as fast. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, usually they're like, oh, haul ass. Still going to take two trips. You know, right. It happens. Yeah. But um, there's for me, there's so much that fires in my brain at once that like, I guess some people, the jokes just right. are gone. But um but that's also, I think, what Delta Lake would have too, this spontaneity and all that. And um, yeah, like there's, what's the word that you say in the beginning of your opening and stuff that I'm just like, let me look this fucking word up. She can't just say like, you know. Um, Extemporaneously. Yes, extempor- that's a like, fun yeah, word. Off the cuff, right? That means off the cuff. Extemporaneously like, sort of like, yeah. uh, has several meanings. One is gorgeous and beautiful okay. only. Okay. Um, also to um, uh, thin Okay. is extemporaneous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Also, it has a lot to do with the postal service, which I don't I don't know that whole part of it. But mm-hmm. it's one of those. It's it's three things. Right. I think when I think of the two of us, I think <laughs> of the things that I admire about you that I that I wish I had. And one of those is um, I think it's fine and it's easy for a lot of people. A lot of us say like, oh, my friends are funny. My friends are funny. But you you have this ability. And I know you're do you do like comedy at the Carlson. Mm-hmm. Um I left Drag Race, obviously, in the like comedy challenge, which, as we both know, everything about you know being on a reality show it, it, ha- it has to tell a story. So right. there has to be a reason why you know you're seeing what you're seeing. It's not a hundred percent. It's it's always edit- an edited thing. But I will say, regardless, what was said came off as not funny. So 
then what happens is I, I now have like opportunities where people are like, oh, we've got some queens doing stand up. You should join us. And I've never been able to do it because I'm mm. so scarred from that right. that I think it is impossible for me to do that. Yeah. And when I watch you do it, because I just saw a clip of you and I was like, this is so funny. And what makes it so funny is that not only is it just blatantly funny, it's dangerous. And there's so many people in here that are fucking uncomfortable yeah. because they want to laugh so hard. And but they feel like they to. shouldn't. Yeah. Like th my favorite thing in the world is and the favorite reaction is, <laughs> oh, uh huh. which is like you laughed first. So we're all in the same bus down yes. to hell. Like there was one time we were doing a drag brunch and we we're having a good time. And I'm like, oh, anybody celebrating anything? She's like, oh, I'm getting married. I'm like, oh, shotgun wedding, huh? And her friends start laughing. And she's like, actually, I am pregnant. I was like, oh, I didn't know. It's not like you're showing her anything. I'm like, when's the baby due? And she's like, September 11th. And I was like, you couldn't have said the 12th or the 13th. You right, had to pick the right. worst fucking day in right. history. Now when you have a baby and you got to feed it and you're like, here comes the airplane. It's going to fucking. Fuck. Yeah. So See, um, I'm talking about. the audience went. Oh! And I was like, it was. Yeah. But for some reason, my brain was like, yes, spit it out. Who cares what happens afterwards? You know, right. it's like. And so um, so I was like, oh, OK. And people are too far, too much. So. Oops. But we're like, do you do you ever like do you ever do like deliver a joke that you think everyone's going to find so funny and they don't? Like, how do oh, you come yeah. back from that? I know that happens, too. So how do you come back from it? Um, Sometimes you just die. And just you let it happen oh, fuck. <laughs> and you're just like, you know, and that's the thing, too, is like a lot of the comedians will say, like, you know, if you just go out and have a successful set all the time, you've learned nothing. You oh. have to die. You have to get heckled. You have to do all that stuff. And I think um, you do have to get over that fear. You know, like I'm terrified. A lot, a lot of times I'm nervous. I'm like, people have heard these jokes already. They're going to be like, oh, whatever. And and step on your punchlines or whatever. But you got to get over that. You know, it's like, um. What does it say about brave people? They, they're, they're terrified too. They, what makes them brave is they do it, you right. know, even though they're scared. So, you know, and you just, you go through it and you just practice and, and yeah. It's exciting you watching you, you do, do it. it. It really, you really is. You can do is. it. I believe in you. I know that you can do it, you know. Do you um, write material for other people? I do. Uh -huh. I do. Like I was uh, fortunate enough to get asked um, for somebody who was doing an all-star season to write a bunch of things for them and um, all but two of them made it on air so and got big laughs and oh, everything good. so I was very excited to do that uh, for them and and in a way I sort of gave them so much more stuff about their own life that they could use for their own show or comedy nice. or whatever so yeah nice. um, and then they were talking to, to another contestant who then told somebody else, who told a friend, they contact me. And so, and I still get offers and whatever, but sometimes I feel like I'm going to run the well dry and be like, what else can we come up with, mm -hmm. you know, to make fun of, of people or situations or life or, you know. When you're writing for someone else, is it like, do you have to kind of look at what they do and then how that would fit them? Or are you inspired yeah, by like for movies? Sure. And like, or... I, I am, everything inspires me really. And even just language inspires me, you know, um, when we were sitting there, uh, doing the haters roast and like I was looking at Willem and I was just like you know yeah you were disqualified and all that stuff but you know you still have come so far down your leg from your loose asshole you right. know like so just <laughs> you know you you sort of create like from language and things and it's your poker face too though like you don't even <laughs> crack like it's yeah. your actressing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's actressing. I'm okay. sissy, damn it. I love um, that. So, yeah, it's – and that's the thing, too. Like, I've loved – some of my favorite comedians were sort of those dry sort of people who mm -hmm. give you that punchline and you have to wait for it. Like, Wendy Liebman was one of my favorites back oh, in the day. Oh, yeah. Uh, watching her on Women of the Night and stuff. And um, and I talked about that on, on Drag Race. And then she sent me a little message on Twitter like, oh, my God, thank you so much for – for that do you ever are you ever in a crowd like maybe uh just maybe not necessarily a stand-up crowd mm -hmm. but like an mc crowd where i guess there's a little bit of sort of stand-up involved in an mc spot oh, yeah. do you ever find um that you're just like there's nobody in the audience that's reacting yeah how do yeah. you get out of that it is hard sometimes you just have to like stick through it and be like all right well like um i was able to film a comedy special um, oh, okay. An hour long comedy special and some of the jokes or some of the references I was making, I was like, this is definitely 10 years older than these people in the audience. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just went through it. I'm like, OK, so you've never experienced this. OK, maybe just me. I apparently I came from the gayest high school in the world, you know, like because so, right. I was talking about high school wrestling and how 
the starting position. I don't know if you had to do wrestling in high school. I did. And like the most embarrassing thing is they line you up by weight class. Mm -hmm. So it's like the twinks are on one end and like, the, and I'm like, I'll just go to the end. And they have to like, okay, you get paired up with you. You get paired up with you. And they made me um, pair up with the teacher because I was the only <laughs> one in the same weight class. <laughs> and I was 13. And so, Fuck. um, <laughs> and they're like, oh, shirts against skins. So you have to like take mm -hmm. your shirt off and be skins. And the first position, the one guy's on all fours. Right. So it's already gay. And the other one is behind him with his like dick on your ass and then arm wrapped around your waist and the other one on the other arm. Right. So I'm like, there I am in sweatpants, like 13 years old, trying to get, trying not to get a boner with uh, the coach. And I'm like, oh, it's the only time I've ever said, put me in coach. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> So then, you know, it's like he flips you over on the mat and you're just like, oh, he's like, I won. I'm like, we both won. I'm just I'm loving this. I'm, I'm enjoying it. So. So, yeah. Um, but then some of the people are like, no, I've never experienced this in, in school. Like we didn't do that. And I'm like, OK, apparently it's new things, apparently. Yeah, yeah. 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 I guess they won't do the whole shirts against skins thing anymore. Do you yeah. wrestle still? <laughs> um, yeah, wrestling with my um, uh, healthy eating habits. I wrestle with uh, the demons in my soul and in my head and in voices. And um, I wrestle with, um, yeah, with men sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Greco Roman mostly. So I love that. Yeah. Let's take a break. After the break, more Darien Lake, plus the secrets of social media's biggest superstars. And we are back. We are here with gorgeous, stunning, blonde bombshell, <laughs> Darian Lake. I love Thank that you. ring. Uh, we both have uh, oh. a fascination with ball rings yes. in a way. Wonder twin powers activate. Yes. Um, you have spent the last few years um, really focusing on um, uh, the gym, mm -hmm. uh, eating habits. Mm -hmm. And this is something that, I mean, I think a lot of people, myself included, uh, it's scary it's scary, and it, and, oh, yeah. it, and it's great when you see someone else that you've known who's always gone through those challenges through their life yeah. tackle something like that. What you're doing is like really setting an example for many people. Um, what 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 is that like? Like what what brought you to that point where you were like, this is going to be important to me? Yeah, it's I've always seen those other people who've lost you know weight or whatever or changed their lives or lifestyles or whatever. For me, it wasn't about losing weight at all. It was about having the pain not hurt in my knees. So mm -hmm. the trainer is like, we'll do lots of squats. I'm like, I don't want to do squats. It hurts. He's like, yeah, but it'll get better. And you'll be able to like walk steps and not, you know, bitch about shit anymore. And so, um, so that's what it was. And I'd always see the people who have these transformations and everything. And they're like, if I can do it, you can do it. And I'm like, oh, fuck you. You mm -hmm. know, I don't care. Um, and, and that's why like, when I first started, I started with a Groupon. I was like, there's not a huge commitment. I've already spent the money and you know, okay, I can be out a hundred dollars. Um, but then it just sort of, it clicked. And um, I had been successful so many times in the past and then failed or went all the way back, had that pendulum swing back to, you know, from losing a lot of weight to gaining it all back or whatever it was. And, you know, it's like, um, you should have got the checkup from the neck up, you know, um, and that's why I still have this, I don't know, it might even still be a, like a fear that I'm going to slip and fall and I'll go back to, you know, uh, I'll get right back up to 480 pounds and, mm -hmm. you know, and then be like, oh, well, fuck this. And um, and figure out like what was the root of my cause, my problem. Was it comfort? Was it sadness? Was it anxiety? Was it, you know, all those things? Um, was it a tasty suicide? You know, I was like, well you know, this is it for my life. I'm single. I have nothing to show for it, whatever. Um, I guess this is just the way it is. And then you get to a point you're like, no, you know, there's, there's so much more out there. There's so many more things around the corner that, you know, than the final whatever moment right. that you have. So, um, so that it's been a lot and a lot of it, I'm, I've have, I had to learn the patience because so many times you you sit there and look on the uh, on scale or look in the mirror and you're like, ugh, and you get done working out as a fat person and now you're fat and sweaty and you're like, okay, now I just did something that's supposed to be good for me, but I look even worse. And I had mm -hmm. to be like Dory in Finding Nemo, like just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep at it. And then eventually you'll look and you'll be like, oh, okay, 
because a lot of times I look in the mirror and I'm like, I still see 480 sta- staring back at me who was like just weighed down. Still the same person, still love me, love my life, but then just weighed down. So I needed right. to sort of um, get stronger. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was just about getting stronger. And so that's that's a great thing about my trainer. He's not like throwing me on a treadmill and be like, you know, do five hours of cardio. He's like, let's do weights. We're going to weight lift. We're going to deadlift. We're going to, you know, squats, all that stuff. So um, that's been so good to me. So that's what's working for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Anything works for anybody else. You know, Um, I love to eat. And um, and you find yourself being like, okay, well, let me try and make better choices. But then so. But I still will fuck up fucking pizza like crazy so the groupon uh yeah. is there one just for knees because i would like to just get the knees if yeah, i yeah. could just do that part i think uh, so <laughs> and not do any work yeah yeah, that, yeah yeah that would be good for me i think yeah dirty knees look at dirty these. knees uh-huh yeah um um so yeah yeah no it's it's a it's, it's a it's a frightening thing too because yeah. whenever I, I you know i can we've been around for reality shows, yeah. not just the ones we've been on, but ones we yeah. watch and I always watch like the biggest loser. And I'm yeah. like, Oh, maybe if you dangled money in front of my face, I could do that. Right. But then I like see people immediately, like the first out the gate, they're like, you're not doing this unless you're vomiting and shitting yourself. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to throw up. Like, can I work up to this? But then I think like, well, maybe that's not the culture. Maybe the culture is like, I feel like, like is the culture that you have to kind of be punished in front of people. Like we want to see you throw up. We want to see like your clothes soaked or else you're not doing what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're not, you're not measuring up to what other people are doing. Right. You're not working hard enough. Yeah. No. Yeah. It sounds like you're in a, in a great space with somebody who like, you know, is, is it yeah. has r- realistic goals. Yeah. Because the thing, too, is like, you know, we'll be working out and all that stuff or whatever. And he can tell. And he's like, you know, how's your heart rate doing? Because I have my like little, you know, Apple Watch Fitbit, whatever on um, my <laughs> Apple Pie watch on uh, <laughs> Apple Pie, <laughs> Apple Pie watch. It's fat fuck. And so um, so, you know, he he makes sure he's like, oh, yeah, heart rate's good. We're doing this, whatever. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um. Is, can I, I see here's, let me just set some goals. Like, yeah. these, these would be real goals. Knees would be real goals. You yeah. know what would be a lovely goal? Mm. To um, look at a, a very steep staircase. Yeah. And not, maybe like at least for half of it, not have to use a handrail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Feel, but I'm also old. 100%. So in my mind, I'm like, maybe it's just my balance too. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the same way. It's sort of like, yeah. And then you find yourself doing like these little things and you're like, okay, these are yeah. those non-scale victories that people talk sure. about. Like, oh, okay. I'm doing that. You know, it's like, or you're getting in your car and you drop your keys and I would have to get out of the car to like find them. But now I can be like, oh, okay. You don't have a driver there, anymore? You know? No, no, I, no, no. I, I see that. I, I see that the, why that is important for all of us, yeah. for all of us. But, you know, I feel like, um, especially too, like in, in entertainment that we're in, people like to sort of categorize the girls. And so they'll be like, these are the big girls. Yeah. These are the dancing girls. Yeah. These are the models. Mm-hmm. These are the this or that. And and so within our category, because we've always been, um, you know, lumped together as sort of like, well, they're, they're older, they're blonde, they're plus size. But mm-hmm. even at like, even when our bodies were very similar and now our bodies are very dissimilar, um, even when they were similar, we were not this. We never looked never. at the same person. We had completely different features. I know. I was flattered because I was like, "Oh my god, she's my goddess!" I feel like the same I love thing it too. Yeah, but I'm and like, when they, she looks yeah. different. Yeah, and yeah, it's Delta Lake. There she is. I, I don't know which. Yeah. And we all constantly get tagged as each other, you know. And people are like, "Oh my god, uh, Darian, you were amazing last night in Long Beach." And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> thank, thank you." I got to that point though, yeah. and oh, it yeah. still is that 100%. point where I'm like, "Okay, cool." Yeah. But I mean, now you're wearing Sonique's yeah. like prom dress so i mean <laughs> but the thing is like no, I, I can't speak to you anymore <laughs> yeah sometimes i feel like people love to compare you to something that they already love so right. i think like maybe it's not an offensive thing they're just like oh i love her too she's just like you you know like right. when people are constantly like oh my god you know you remind me of my best friend or you remind me of minan you know whatever which i love yeah <laughs> i do love that i love it when people say like oh i you know and I and I've actually spotted mm-hmm. it. I don't know if you've ever spotted this, but it's, certainly in Southern California, there's a lot of like. Obviously, we have a huge Hispanic population, mm. and I will have people that will say like, they'll they'll really uh, quote unquote fan, mm. and they'll be supportive and all of that. And then maybe one day I'll look on their Instagram and I'll see like their family, and I'm like, 
Yeah. I see it. Mm -hmm. Your mom is like a plus size lady. Yep. She seems like she's like yeah. into having her hair done and stuff. It's nostalgic mm -hmm. to them and it's a, it's a level of comfort. Yeah. So I always find it as so flattering because I think I remind you of somebody that makes you comfortable. Yeah. That is the hugest, hugest compliment you could give me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's nice for you to say like, God, you look like somebody I want to fuck. <laughs> well, that's great too. What a lovely compliment. I but... Mean, oh. Yeah. You're not telling me that, so I'll take the other one. Mm. We'll play Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'll grab each one of my uh, breasts and oh my God. or my ankles and stuff me like a turkey. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't do that, though. You don't? No, I, I, I don't know. I've tried to put things up in my butt, but my butthole's just like... It disagrees. Mm, no, it's, it's not for, Have you heard yeah. of a side... A side. A side. Uh, There's a like, top, a bottom, and a side. Oh, okay, yeah. That's a new yeah. thing. It's a, well, oh. it's, I don't know if it's a new thing, but it's a new term. Mm -hmm. People that just don't enjoy that. Yeah. They just are not interested. And I think that's... F I mean... Yeah. Who said what you have to do? You right. know what I mean? Or yeah. who said, I mean, we can have this conversation forever when people are like, this is more masculine than that. Or this is, if you're the mm. bottom, you have to be, uh, I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah. Nothing more masculine than taking a dick. I mean, that fucking yeah. hurts. Like, that's kind of what know, I think. Like, pain. It didn't like the, like the Greeks and the Romans, like, didn't they take on lovers? Like, yeah. If, was that not like maybe not an exercise in masculinity in their mind? Maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. Wait. There is a joke about that too. Tell about me. Like there was a oh god, I I don't know if I can remember it all completely. We'll have to Google it or whatever, but to get it better. But it was like this uh, Greek guy and a Roman, and they were talking about things. It's like oh, well, the Greeks invented, you know, architecture and stuff, and and then the Romans like yeah, but we decorate it with paintings and, and murals and all that stuff, and and the Greek is like yeah, well we invented sex, and the Romans like well we invented or we introduced it to women, um, so that was sort of their yeah I don't know. What, what kind of sandwich do you get at Subway if you had to go to Subway? Okay, I would r rather eat something I found in a Subway than at a Subway. <laughs> oh like, God. I don't fucking Why? understand. <laughs> it's gross. Why? When I smell the bread, that is not fresh baked bread smell. It is not. I don't know what kind of chemical they use. It just, really? It terrifies me. I'm like, it doesn't smell like fresh bread to me. Really? And I know what that is like because I have a yeast infection currently. <laughs> so you know. And so I know authority. what yeast smells like, and that's not it. And so... um Oh, and those slimy fucking meats. Okay, oh. no meat. Okay, how about yeah. this? If you had to pick a cookie, they have cookies. a cookie. I, I'm if I'm gonna pick a cookie, what I really want is like a white chocolate macadamia nut cookie. You know, um, yeah. that's what I want. I love I love macadamia nuts. Yeah, so much that I went to Hawaii just so I could go to the just macadamia for that. Farm. Well, that too. Yeah, and the weather. You, uh, you guys, you well, you guys, you girls, you you <clears throat> entertain trisses, mm -hmm. um, all do these really successful brunches. We're talking about food, but you do these successful brunches, which are of course centered around food. Yeah, yeah, at least for the guests. And I think it goes so well with like the people that we're entertaining because it's the girls that I used to party with back in the day that oh, you know yeah. that. Um, probably, you know, well, now they have kids and they can't go out late night to the clubs and all that stuff, but they're like, they can throw money at me, you know, during brunch hours. I love that. You know, I'll take their Republican money and, and be like, woohoo. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. How's your husband doing? Great. Awesome. You know, is he single? <laughs> uh, let's have some fun. And so, and we have so much fun because we can use all of our, you know, stand up and our jokes and, and talk about old days and, mm -hmm. and, and. And, you know, they they have good jobs so they they can throw stacks of dollar bills and I they want to live that. their fantasy of being like, Woo, make it rain on the queens. You know, oh, God, I wish I wish mm -hmm. I could off one of the other. Not you, but one of the other girls and mm -hmm. then just go there and live there and work in that circuit. It's you're so welcome. Amazing. You're welcome to come and Who can do we it. kill first, though? Oh, Kasha Davis. Kasha Davis. Yeah. I think. yeah. She's, She's got other so, opportunities. She, going well, on. you know what they say is he cut the head off the dragon. And right. then, you know, it's like, you know, she's sort of like the head of the dragon. She really, she's the go-getter. She's so, um, she's so amazing at what she does, which is make people hate her. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, uh, no, uh, no, she's so amazing at what she does and like really putting things together. She's so ambitious. And like, I'm always trying to like pull some of that, mm -hmm. you know, out of her and stuff and to, to add to my own personality. So, yeah. And so, um, so yeah, I guess we can. She's so also so giving as well. Yeah. She was talking to another girl who wanted to come and she's like, I can take the night off and you you can do this or whatever. And um No. Just, yeah. Don't I wouldn't take a night off. Right. Fuck right. off. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm gonna take a night. Not when it's that successful. Yeah. Get your own shit. No, Kasha was here and we were talking about I was like, mm. girl, you you need to like you could take this like nationally. Oh, absolutely. And, like, there's so yeah. many people around here. Yeah. Find people that you know, and I'm sure I say I say this like it's so easy. But, you know, um, 
the quality control, I think, is the hardest part mm -hmm. because you can't be there and right. you would want to say what we do in Rochester or, or anywhere in that area, we want to see replicated to that same level, that right. quality, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not people who are just looking for a gig, yeah. people that are looking to make it like show the passion and show the respect for the audience. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. I think I, that would be amazing. Yeah. And those personalities that really mesh well right. together and stuff. And so like we were working at a club in Rochester and then the owners decided to open one in Fort Lauderdale. And when they hired their cast, we were like, oh, that's a Darian, that's an Ambrosia, that's a Kasha, that's a, oh, that's a you know, that. and so... It's like they wanted to put together that team of people who work well together. And it's like the Golden Girls or the Sex in the City or the, you know, sure. um, um, or the Delta or the um, whatever show. Designing she's Women. Designing Women. All yes. of them. Yeah. Sometimes I have brain farts. It's really. Sometimes I just fart. I just. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing that just, the whole time. That's, I wasn't sure if you noticed. Um, You know, I was like, you always smell fantastic. OK. Always. So the, it's that. I know you love your perfumes. I do. She does. <laughs> Let's take a break. Get ready to read me Delta Boots. And we are back with Darian Lake, who's just talking about Virginia and homeowning and just all these different things. It all fits together. If you really read through the lines, it's mm -hmm. hilarious. Yeah. Um, this is the part of the podcast where we read letters. Read me Delta! People send in letters, ask me for advice, mm -hmm. or make observations. I usually say... Um, when these people send these letters, if they want to send a letter and they want to send like questions or observations to save the comments, because we already see enough of that in the comment section that mm -hmm. we try not to respond to, at least on my Instagram. I try not to, but every I try to respond to like if I if I'm on, I'll respond to a few comments. Mm -hmm. But then like I've learned something and that is if I make time to respond to all the people saying ugly shit, mm -hmm. all these other people that I'm not responding to that are saying really nice shit. Which is always the majority. Yeah. They why don't they deserve something nice? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like they took the time to say something nice to me. I usually block and move on. And the Which funny is thing smart. is, is like because you know, I like sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to fucking go off on somebody. Somebody recently sent me a message and she goes, About eight years ago, I sent some hateful stuff to you and all that stuff or whatever, and you blocked me, but I was thirteen years old. And I'm like, if I would have went off on this 13 year old and told her, like, you know, go jump into traffic or mm -hmm. gave her steps Tell on how to kill now. herself. <laughs> right. But like, you know, it's like, yeah, it was, they're young and they're stupid. And I'm just like, you know, let's block and move on. And she goes, you know, you blocked me and every right you had to. But I just want to say sorry and, and all that stuff. So I said, of course, forgive and forget. Bitch. You weak bitch. Um, but Why then I did you, get a you telegram. You fucking read her ass. Yeah. Right. I got a telegram today. It said Delta work. Stop. I was going to say, I think the Delta Lake would have like probably yeah. probably would have not said anything and then would have went off on a stranger and then would have felt bad about it and then would have like, I don't know, ate her feelings or something and then like <laughs> cried about it <laughs> and then pontificated and See? extemporaneously spoke. Yes, absolutely. Extemporaneously. And then shit herself. All of that would happen in one. Okay, letter. Yes. I always forget. I'm, I start. Are you going to do like Johnny Carson and like predict what it says beforehand? I um, could be your Ed McMahon. Let's see. Um, I won't, but let me think. Uh, this okay. is probably going to be about um, Drew Barrymore. Cats. Cat. Oh. I'll say it's going to be about I love, cats. I love my cat, my smushy. My you baby. do have a, a really beautiful cat. Um, I rescued her. You breastfeed her. Yes, I breastfeed her. <laughs> Listen to this Rescue. one. But. Dear Ms. Work and fascinating guest, I'm a huge fan and longtime listener of your podcast from Manchester, UK. Okay. The show is the perfect way to start the week, and I always look forward to getting very Delta every Monday whenever I listen to podcasts. I'm writing to ask you if you can enlighten me as to why, when I go to restaurants with people, they feel the need to comment on what I order. Just this year, comments were made that include, that's a lot of mayonnaise uh, or tap water. You're really pushing the boat out. Or, wow, you're ordering dessert. We all, of course, make judgments about what other people are doing around us. Why do I feel the need to say, why do people feel the need to say them out loud when it comes to food? Last I checked, I was the only person eating what I order, and I'm the only one who's going to be digesting it. Do you have any similar experiences and or suggestions about how I should deal with this behavior? Thank you very much for your time. I understand how valuable it is. Yours faithfully, Adam. I do have an experience with this, and I have to tell you, like, I, I mean, I... Sometimes I spill tea about like family members and I and I I think that they are not on the realm to listen to this podcast. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't think they do. Um, but I think that sometimes they're like I have family members that are aware of what I do, but I think they intrinsically know like 
I probably should not listen to this because this is going to be a type of uh, realm. So anyway, I have a family member who uh, likes to do something like maybe everyone, maybe they're going to be bringing over like burgers and fries, mm. like because uh, we had a painting party mm. or, um, you know, anything like that where they're going to be ordering like kind of like the same food. Like I just ordered cheeseburgers and fries. Everybody go for it. And what they'll do is they'll pop in a salad mm. and they'll go, I got this for you because I'm helping you. Oh, God. I'm helping you. Mm -hmm. And I always think I, I, like, I want to go off. But again, it's one of those situations where I go, thank you so much. That is so thoughtful. I, I do love a salad. I hope you got my favorite dressing. And I just kind of push it to the side and mm. like dismiss myself. But I also have someone in my family who doesn't do it to me. They just do it in general. Uh, they did stop. But they used to at um, at the holidays when there would be like the whole sort of island of food that people would bring over. Like I brought snickerdoodles and I yeah. brought this and that. Um, there would always be pounds and pounds of C's candy. And they would open it up and they would take a knife and they would cut it in three. Stop. They said, nobody needs to eat a full piece of candy. Fuck. I mean, <laughs> uh -uh. I need to eat the full first layer yeah, of the box. Exactly. Like, I, come on. Like, it's like these fun sized candy. That's not fun to me. It's not. That's it's not rude. Fun. Who is that? Oh my, I've snorted more than that at the time. And so I'm, oh, have yeah. you ever had anybody that like sort of like observes or especially, you know, absolutely all the time. You know people, too, oh my, yeah. Especially yeah. if somebody thinks that you are embarking on whether you call it a diet or a change of eating mm -hmm. or I'm no longer drinking, uh, I'm oh, yeah. no longer drinking beer. Oh, you should be eating that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh is that in your diet? Oh, oh, come on. That all the time. Yeah. And then <laughs> even like Ew. I was at the salon and I'm sitting there eating a salad and, you know, we don't have like a break room or anything. And someone goes, oh, that looks good. I'm like, it does not. It's a fucking salad. I'm like, I'm it hating does not. it. does <laughs> No, it doesn't. You stupid bitch. <laughs> this is horrible. Um, but I'm just eating it so I can shit regularly today. Right. So like, um, yeah, people will comment about everything. Oh, 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 is that on your low carb diet or is that on your, you know, no, oh it's not. God. It's not. But it's going in my fucking mouth. Because I'm hungry. Well, and I think a lot of, I mean, again, certainly not yeah. an expert, not even an amateur, yeah. but I mean, just from, from yeah. living a life where I have obviously been a member of Weight Watchers, mm -hmm. tried Herbalife, yeah. done all these different things. Um, people don't realize that, especially when you have a significant amount of weight to lose or, or have already lost, um, this is a, this has to be a life change yeah. where you're like, no, I'm not saying I'm never going to have that again. I'm saying I'm not going to regularly have that. Yeah. And when I have it, I'm aware of what I'm having. I don't need somebody to go like, I'm not looking around going, oh, twist my arm and tell me not to have it. Like, right. pinch me. Oh, oh, like, get these I chips know, away from me. Yeah, I know what it is. And if yeah. it's 4th of July and I'm having this, it's because I'm mm -hmm. having this. I don't need. Yeah. If I'm going to a nice restaurant and I want to grab a second piece of bread from the bread basket, I'm fucking going to do it. Second. You know? Right. Just two? Just two. You crossed over. Yeah. I knew this was going to happen. How many have you had? You crossed over. Yeah. I need like, Evan Evan was here, Evan Ross Katz, and we said that we're not supposed to talk about how much bread people eat. Yeah. Okay. You just told us two. Sorry. No, I'm, no, like, well, I'm, I'm, I was trying to sound like I don't eat much bread, but. <laughs> <laughs> but honey, you know I, what I mean? It's what do they so say? Like, I eat so many carbs that when I sweat, I starch my shirts. Fuck. <laughs> That's a lot. But it's just so weird. I think that people, too. Um, uh, I'm going to go back to this letter because, you know, I have no I have no uh, retention. Yes. Adam, yeah. I, I feel like, yeah, there are people that especially when they think for if you just changed for a second, if you were like, you know mm -hmm. what, this month um, uh, or you say I'm going to I'm going to quit smoking. Maybe you say I'm going to quit smoking and, and, and you're like, I'm going to I'm lessening it. And then somebody sees you and they're like, oh, I guess you're not doing that anymore. And you're like you know what? I've been doing it a lot less and I have a way that mm -hmm. I'm doing it. Or yeah. like you, like you said, you meet with your trainer and, and your trainer, mm -hmm. like you, there's that thing where you have to go to your trainer and your trainer's like, I know you're a person. Yeah. You know, you're a human being. Like, yeah. I don't think that you have to have this done by July or else I'm not going to talk to you yeah. anymore. And then people will sit there and be like, Oh, how's it? Are you still losing weight? Are you still doing this? Are you still doing like, None of your fucking business, really. None of your business. And also everybody that does like yeah. everybody that is a fitness person is like, yeah. Okay, I'm a fitness person. I do this for a living yeah. or, and this is my life devotion. Yeah. I'm going to be doing it forever. Yeah. And also, I don't know if you've heard about reverse dieting, but reverse dieting is because you cannot stay in a calorie deficit for too long oh. that you now 
let your metabolism catch up and then you have to eat a little bit more calories than before. And you will gain a little bit before because you have to have everything catch back up again. Uh And I'm like, now I have to reverse diet as well as regular diet. Like, right. This is why so many people give up and they're like, I've lost hope. But like, yeah. And it's like now you have to do these things. And like, so when I am not eating the salad and I'm having a full sandwich, don't talk to me. Just don't talk to me. Right. Yeah. Did you ever do Weight Watchers? Oh, did Weight Watchers? I did Richard Simmons Deal a Meal, where oh, you move the cards the... over and stuff. Yeah. Uh huh. I've done all of them. I've done um, Nutrisystem, where you get the prepackaged meals and stuff. Uh huh. And... Oh God, yeah. I can yeah. remember when, um, you know, the, the the Weight Watchers program, which I, mm-hmm. I guess is, like, yeah. you know, it's always been a very successful program, and it's based on you know yeah. just eating a healthy balance. Right. Um, but they always had different programs. Like every year, it would be like Easy Flex is yeah. this year, and then the next year it was like. Uh, points to freedom Mm -hmm. and like it's always like a different name but I guess the science keeps changing so they try to change with the science I guess right but really it's thermodynamics of the body of like you know calories in calories out whatever gets you there when I was doing the Atkins diet I was being really successful because I got to a point where I was so fucking bored of anything that was like more meat more cheese more like celery no thanks you know right so I was just then I started eating less because of it but um, but I got to the point where I sort of was treating food like an allergy, like, oh, I can't eat that. has too much of this. I can't do that. So it was restrictive, but it was working for me. But once you go off of it, you gain weight. But no matter what it is, once you go off of it, you're going to go right. back to your, to your ways. What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. You know, so. Why does it have to be so hard? I like it hard. Oh, my God. See, this is why we can't bring you around. I'm sorry. Okay. Dear Divas, mm. I live in the suburbs out of the way. It takes about an hour by train to get to work downtown. Don't judge, but throughout the day, I use my grinder to check who's around me. Why would I judge you? Mm. Uh, the guys downtown are cute and trade, way better than the five same men I keep seeing near my house in the suburbs. However, I can never meet anyone after work because I am undouched. As a hungry bottom, there is no point in meeting someone on Grinder if there is no anal intercourse, for me personally. You can see, uh, you can therefore guess my issue. I need to find a safe spot away from home to douche. I've done it once at work after, yeah. um, after I thought everyone had left, but then the CEO, it's a small startup, walked in and I'm pretty sure he thought I had a severe case of diarrhea. I've considered going to the mall. At least it would be more anonymous, but I don't know if it's appropriate. A grinder hookup wanted me to douche at his home, but I don't feel comfortable. Ugh, it feels like I'm wasting my best bottoming years. Rent is too expensive downtown, and I don't have the money for a car. Any ideas? Thank you, my loves, and keep slaying the podcast game. Ken. Hmm. Ken. Hmm. Well, Ken. Ken. I know that you say that you don't have the money for a car, which, you know, that's expensive. It is expensive. I, I have a car. You have a car. I do. We have cars. We're, we're, we're uh, women of a, of a certain uh, uh, age and a certain resource. But um, I can remember uh, not having a car uh, younger. Um, but I would say that if you are moving into this place where you want to have anal sex with someone... And you want to uh, be sure that there's not going to be any kind of accident that you're uncomfortable with. Um, I would say you're probably better off uh, doing this cleaning process at that person's home. Freckle the toilet. Yeah. Just then <laughs> at uh, at your job. Like, yeah. I'm just going to say, like, mm-hmm. I would think that in, in your mind, you would say, I'm going to have to make some concessions here. I can't do it at home. OK, what are my next options? Well, this person is going to push part of their body inside of mine and they really want to do this and I really want them to do it. I'm going to just have to suck it up. No pun intended Mm -hmm. and use their bathroom and their shower. Cause listen, you can't just use the toilet. Like you're going to need to like also take a shower afterwards because I mean, you know, I don't know how big your asshole is, but I just, I feel like how I, you might want to cut that cause that looks like a white power symbol. Um, (laughs) Be sure to cut that. Um, but however big your asshole is, like, you know, there's going to be some some backsplash of water. And I just don't think that like a, a piece of toilet paper or a, a, a wipey is going to do. You're going to want to go back in and be sure that you're fully clean. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I would do at it at your work, job. You would do it at your job. I, why not? Because, you know, have you, you? Well, if, if you hate your job, you might as well be like, well, fuck this. You know, I'm going to freckle your toilet and I don't give a shit and whatever. It's well, just, fortunately, you don't have to worry about this. Right. But this no, not, not at all. And sometimes I'm like, hey, you know, if the, the field's a little muddy, we can still play ball. Sports reference. Uh, <laughs> that's disgusting. I apologize. Uh, that's dairy. That's Darien Lake. Yes. Darien Lake. Who <laughs> yes. said that? Yes. Not Delta Lake and not Delta Work. That's Darien Lake. Yeah. If you would like my mom's phone number, you can call her for raising me so horribly. You know. <gasps> so listen, uh, you're gonna. Ha they're just gonna have to accept it. I think yeah. you're gonna have to get. I mean, if you're gonna get familiar enough to let somebody put their DNA inside of you, mm -hmm. or even if they're mm -hmm. using a condom, it's not their DNA, but you get it. You get what I'm saying. Please don't go to Sabaro in the mall and try to like douche. Yeah. That's gross. Like <laughs> don't don't think for a second that you're going to have to be embarrassed to do it at their house. They're fucking you. Yeah. They are putting their mm -hmm. penis in your rectum, yeah. pulling it out, pushing it back in, pulling it out, pushing it back in, pulling it out, pushing it back in. Pulling it out, mm. pushing oh. it back in until I don't know what happens. They blast you full of tapioca and you're fucking worried about douching in their bathroom. You're doing them a favor as well as yourself. Uh. Clean your ass out at their house. Please <laughs> do not feel bad. Don't feel bad, baby. Uh. Don't. No, no. I'm happy that you are cleaning up. I think it's super important. But baby, yes. that's the least they could do. I would say too, I mean, if you can look on Travelocity or whatever the sites, you can get a hotel room. Sometimes they're not expensive. Maybe if you're, I don't know, a member, a Wyndham Rewards member, are you? <laughs> if you are, you can go there, you can get yourself a room and you can have a romp and maybe you can, I don't know. Yeah. What yeah, if it ends up not being great. worth it? Yeah, for sure. You know, and just, just, yeah, just enjoy it. Have fun. Just go crazy. Get dirty. Yeah. Become an elementary school and let him shoot kids inside you. Oh, here we go. Here we go. See what I mean? You see what I mean? Wait, have you ever, uh, uh, I'm not talking about douching. I'm just talking about a general, like, oh, I'm going to meet this person. And like, you kind of built it up in your mind that like, this is going to be a wonderful escapade. And you were like, this is so awful. It's not even going to start. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And because, yeah, sometimes, I mean, even just when you start to maybe blow them or whatever, and then you're like, mm, nope, nope. I can't do it. Nope. I can't I'm risk out. it. Yeah. This is boring, yeah. right? Yeah, that's why I usually set an alarm on my phone to go off anyway. I'm like, oh, I got to grab that. Oh, uh -huh. I got to go. Yeah. yeah. So I've got that out. Or I can just turn it off. Oh, let me just silence my phone. You know, if it's I... going well, oh, let me just silence my phone. Yeah. But if it's not, you know, um, that oh timba God. starts playing and it's time for you to go. Douching at work and in the, like, in the, <laughs> what, in the mall or something? Well, I don't work in a mall, so. Uh, have you ever I, worked in a mall? I have, yeah. I I. I worked at uh, like we a built the store. malls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we uh -huh. are people of a certain age. We built the malls. Do you follow this account on Instagram called <gasps> Mark? What is it called? No, like for the love of lug. Do you follow luxury department store? No, please oh put that God. on my phone. You have to. Luxury it's just store. pictures of malls. In fact, wow. I just talked to the proprietor of the account, mm. and they said to me like we had a conversation about working in the mall, and I worked for a long time in yeah. like department store, which. Here on on the West Coast, we uh, for a time had the May Company, and then we had Robinsons. Okay, and then they became Robinsons May. But like mm. on the East Coast, Felines. Okay, so we would get people that would bring in like yeah, yeah, our yeah. Filenes. I don't know how Filenes it's pronounced. Basement. They, they would that, bring yeah, in that that's... that placard, and they would oh. be able to purchase because it's oh. the same company. Yeah, yeah. Hex, uh -huh. H E C H T apostrophe mm. Hex, Hex. Hmm. I'm not saying it right. Hex, Hex, Hex. <laughs> German. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but there's a million of them. Mm. I mean, I remember Sears. working in the department store. People would bring in a charger plate that was like that long and thin, mm -hmm. old, old. Oh, yeah. And we would have to like lay it in the machine. And if it didn't go, you'd have to use the pencil. Yeah. Remember that shit? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was good taste. Yeah. But you mentioned your cat earlier. Oh, yeah. Tell us about your cat. My cat. Um. <clears throat> so during 2020, um, I was completely alone and all that stuff. My, I had a roommate. He moved out in 2019, bought a house, all that. And so after the, when the pandemic hit, I was like, you know, I think I could probably get a cat. You know, I'm not touring as much. And, and so I was looking around. <clears throat> Luckily, everybody was so inspired to adopt animals during the pandemic that all the shelters were gone. So I was talking to some people who were like rescuing like feral cats and stuff. And then my roommate had gotten a kitten from a, a woman 
and she was getting rid of all of her cats because sadly she was uh, dying. Um, and so <laughs> she was dying of uh, ovarian cancer and she had this cat named Kimo Sabi. Goodbye. You I wrote know. this joke. No, swear to God. No, no, this is You're this such complete. a liar. I no, swear. This is 100% a true story. And so <laughs> she was four years old and her name was Kimo Sabi, like little friend um, from, you know, uh, uh, Lone Ranger and everything. And so... Um, so I was like, well, I loved her, and it, you know, and she's like, yeah, I'll let you take her for one hundred fifty dollars. And so, um, so she came to live with me, and I changed her name to Smushy because she has a little smushy face, mm -hmm. and because um, I was not going to call her chemo. And especially in June of twenty twenty, I also was diagnosed with melanoma, skin cancer, mm -hmm. and had to have that taken out, and I have a big scar like on my leg, and like um, and scar in my in my groin area. Um, mm -hmm for where they took lymph nodes to make sure it didn't spread. Luckily, nothing spread, um, but I'm still getting checked and all well, that Well, you stuff. don't yeah. spread. I mean, you've already well, said well, that, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know so, what I mean? you Selfish. know, like a cancer. And mm -hmm. so... um, And you never thought of getting another cat named Melanie Oma? <laughs> Melanie Oma. No, Why? I know. I don't know. I just, I did not think of that. One's enough. Yeah. One's yeah. enough. Yeah. So, um, so she's the love of my life and she's so Aww. sweet and so lovely and, and she's... Unlike me in the way she is not food motivated at all. She okay. doesn't care. She's like, food will be in her bowl and she'll take it. I'll try and give her wet food. She's like, no, I'm, I'm fine. My cats don't like wet I'm food good. either for some reason. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, so um, she loves her playtime, her cuddle time, and, and, and her alone time. So Aww. she's like me. So I mean, that's important. You have to have that, especially when you're really busy. I mean, you are a busy person. Um, you're he obviously here in town doing doing a few things. And, I'm so excited. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is good. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It was my my first and only stop that I'd really ever want to do. Oh, it was thank like you. my first thought when I came out here. This is so fun. I, I love this. I appreciate you being here. I know. I wish there could be like more of it. And when, yeah. Yeah, we could talk more about um, these names. I think we could come up with some really good drag names based around Melanie Oma and uh, yeah. Kimo mm -hmm. Sabi. Yeah. We could just be cruel. Absolutely. Without the intention of hurting people. Why? Why? Just making fun. Sometimes people can be hurt. It's fine. It's, it's okay. Fine. You have to go through the hurt to realize. We've the been joy hurt. Of life. Yes. <laughs> We've been hurt. Who hurt you? I'm like, who and you're hasn't? You're gonna feel the pain too. <laughs> uh, when people say that all the time, who hurt you? I'm like everybody. Uh, every fucking buddy. Everybody hurt me. Yeah. What's racist? Everything is racist. It's true. Everything is homophobic. Mm -hmm. You all fucking fat phobic. You suck. Yeah. That's the only reason why I decided to lose weight because I wanted people to treat me nice. Right, because you wanted to be fat phobic. <laughs> I, I did, I did. But I, I mean, we're homophobic, be, so we're on our way. I mean, please, I mean, just, I'm know. still two hundred and whatever ninety pounds or whatever, so I'm still a heavy person. I will always be. So uh, you know, it's so interesting. Again, going back to it, it's like people always. It kills me because when you say it, I know people still say it and they, they I don't know what what they expect you to fucking say back when they're like, oh, are you still on this? Are you still mm -hmm. are you sure you can eat that? It's like, why do you own me to ask me that? Mm -hmm. What do I what am I supposed to give you? I you've already made a decision to do something for yourself. And then, you know, it's just I mean, I listen, the red lights on. I could be talking about this forever, like with yeah. the Madonna people forever. Oh, I love Madonna. I love Madonna. I love Madonna. And then all of a sudden, oh, Madonna doesn't look as good as this other person who's close to her age. Well, fuck off. Yeah. She doesn't owe you to look like anything or whoever the fucking these people are. They don't owe you to look like whatever. You don't owe somebody to give them an update on your fucking weight loss and where you're mm -hmm. going to stop and where you're going to start and why this girl should do it and why that person shouldn't do it. Oh, my God. It's exhausting. Yeah. Want to do it? Do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Who cares? I just want to become one with the couch under ice cream. What mm. if I did that? Would you be there if they had to bang the wall out and bring me out? Absolutely, hundred percent. Me you and would. Richard Simmons crying right next to each you other. Would. Yeah, a hundred percent. You're like, yeah. are you still doing that? <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, hey, um, can I have that outfit of yours? No, like, is, is I need still... new curtains. Hey, the um, yeah, that, that ring that you had. Can I? Yeah. Can I wear that as a necklace? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank, Thank everyone you. for listening to Very Delta and watching on YouTube. You know, you can now search for Very Delta on your podcast apps. We come out every Monday. And you can also find us right here on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel. Special hello to everyone watching the show on YouTube. Thank you so much for the love and the support and the comments and, um, you know, all of it. Actually, I've been on there and I've commented when it goes live at midnight and I try to engage and people are like, oh, sick. Who is that? And you don't even talk to me. I'm even on there with my real name, Delta Work. You don't even talk to me. That's okay. It doesn't matter. 
You can just keep the comments coming, even if they're shitty. I don't want them shitty, but you know, sometimes people make observations. Maybe you don't like me in a red wig. That's fine. I like me in a red wig. I love it. Stop fat shaming people. Stop asking people what they're eating. Also, you know what's very Delta? Subscribing to Mom Podcast so you don't miss an episode. We want you to send all of your correspondence to readmedelta at gmail.com. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. And now we have dedicated socials for the show at Very Delta on Instagram and on TikTok. TikTok, you can get clips and updates. And you can join me and Darian, uh, both not just on Instagram, but where else can they find you? Um, anywhere. You can find me on TikTok, Miss Lake. She's on there. Um, Snapchat, Snap Me or something like that. Do you do Twitter? I do Twitter. Yeah, yeah I still love Twitter. I miss you over on Facebook. As well, I know it's but you know forever. what? I I get my fix everywhere else. Thank you know, you. yeah. I and love I love that. I love when people um, also re repost your stuff as well. People are wild. The shit they can do. I wish I knew Amazing. how to do that stuff. I, me too. I'm not. They'll like put enough. airplanes and stuff, yeah. and they'll like, and it, it makes it even funnier because I'm like, this is taken out of context, but it makes even better context. Yeah. What you're doing, it's so fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all so much. Join me next week right here for another episode of Very Delta. And until then, keep things very, very Delta. Next episode. Perra is April Carrion. Are you wearing pasties under this right now? No, these You're are not... my full of brass. Okay, because I know that you wear pasties a lot <laughs> for stuff. Yeah. Um, what what do you have any advice for people who are first time pasty wearers? Mira, it, it's not gonna be it's gonna hurt. This episode of Very Delta was brought to you by Orange Diamond, the official emoji of the Very Delta show. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. 